Hello and welcome to another video by Georgie Shed. So today what we're going to be looking at is this Smith's radio altimeter that I've reversed engineered to work with a flight simulator. So um, I'll, uh, I'll take it apart in a minute but first of all I'll just give it a demonstration of it working. So you can see these two LEDs are lit up. Um, so if I set it to, it's currently at zero so now I'm going to set it to a thousand feet. There you go, it's a little bit jumpy, but that's because the PID gains aren't quite tuned yet. So let's go. So you can see um, both the lights have come out. And uh, now if I go to um, 5,000, well, I'll go to 4,990, which is the maximum this can display. If I then go to 5000, you should be able to see that the cover comes up, which it does, so that's uh, that's working. And then if we come back down to uh, 500 feet, the orange light should come on because the warning altitude is set for a thousand feet. to zero the red light should come on as well like that so I'll now take the lid off and I'll show you inside so this is the unit outside of its case so um, I'll just go through how it all works and what the different elements are so if I flip um, the unit over carefully you can see that inside we've got a big DC motor um, geared down with a gear glued on it that drives the gears <clears throat> This isn't very pretty. I'm not that proud of it, but it works and works for now So until it breaks, I'm just gonna leave it and um, also because one of the um, Solenoids that operated the flags was um, Non-functional I ended up uh, replacing it with a server that pulls on a wire and opens and closes that which I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate in a minute. Um, I then gutted out all the old um, electronics, so there was all sorts in it. There was like transformers and whatnot, because it's designed to run on 400 hertz AC, and replaced this with the electronics um, to drive it with the STM32. So luckily it had a potentiometer in it that calculates um, the position of the instrument, so that was quite straightforward to implement. Um, we then have an H bridge that drives the motor and um, all the gears. And I also ended up replacing the lights in the front because the bulbs were extremely dim. So I've just replaced them with LEDs. But they use um, a bit of the original wiring to turn them on and off. So if I set this to um, over a thousand feet, you can see the, um, the lights going off and on. And that's not. Um, through programming, that's through the actual mechanical parts of the instrument. So you'll see that that light goes out. And if I adjust the height above what the current height is, you'll see the um, the light come on and off. So that's quite interesting. In terms of the actual controls, we've got an STM32. Um, I did try to use an Arduino um, Nano at first, but the problem with this was that it didn't have a good enough um, analog digital converter so it couldn't get uh, close enough to the um, actual value of the instruments so that's why i ended up using the stm32 which is really i'm going to start using that a lot more because it's just uh, the same as an arduino but cheaper and more f and faster so and then it interfaces with that um, through this connector that I 3D printed so it actually uses the proper um, pins so I can unplug it if I wanted to um, so that's quite handy for to replace in the future and to be able to unplug it and plug it back in we then also have four relays so currently only one of them has been used and that's to power the other um, the other flag 
um, because that still works. So that runs off a 21 uh, volt laptop power supply. And then I've got another three that I can use for other things that I'll run through the STM32. So the actual plan is it's currently running off my computer on a USB connection. But my actual plan is to connect the STM32 to the Arduino Mega that runs the rest of the system. So I've only got one plug and one data stream going to the computer. Okay, so also this, um, I've programmed the STM32 using Arduino and the STM32 Duino um, packages. So that's uh, made it fairly easy um, to do. So I'll, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of the code now. So this is the code in the Arduino IDE. So first of all, the libraries we are using for this, we are using pidcontrol.h, which I've uh, found to be the best PID library, um, just through trial and error and ease of use. We have running average and server, and you'll see why I use these in a second. So we then just declare everything, and declare our variables, and declare all the relays as outputs. And then here we... Um, set up the serial communication to the computer and we then begin the PID controller with these gains. And why I like um, the PID controller library is you can set the PID limit, the max and minimums, um, really easily. So then in the loop uh, we get any new data um, if we've got it and then we also um, analog read the potentiometer and add it to the running average so this smooths out any um, erroneous values and gets us a better more consistent values and sort of stops it jittering a little bit and we then compute the PIDs on that average so because of the H ridge and the way the PID controller works and I needed to tweak the output so if it's a positive value one of the um, H bridge outputs gets pulse width modulated and if it's negative the other one does it and then here we have the code that if the um, altitude exceeds 5000 the server closes the um, gate because it's beyond range and then if not it sets the PID set point to whatever the altitude set is and um, moves the server so that's uh, pretty much it. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or bits of knowledge. And um, make sure to subscribe to see all future videos. Bye.